In this HVACR training video, we're going over seven scenarios in order for you to check the refrigerant charge of an R1098 air conditioner. And this unit is equipped with a thermostatic expansion valve as the metering device. So we're going to be checking the refrigerant charge and subcooling to determine if this unit is overcharged, undercharged, or correctly charged. We're going to assume that we've already checked the airflow and that's correct. In scenario one, I'm going to explain the process and compare the actual subcooling to the target subcooling to check the charge level. In scenarios two through seven, you can pause the video and solve those on your own. I'll give you the answers to each of those as we go. So here in scenario one, we have our blue gauge connected to our large vapor line, and that's the low pressure side of the system. And then we have our red gauge connected to our small liquid line, and that's the high pressure side of the system. We're measuring temperature on both the vapor and the liquid line. And since we're using the subcooling method, we're mainly going to be focusing on the red gauge and the temperature on that liquid line. So in scenario one, we have 327 PSI. We convert that to the R4 tonight saturated temperature of 102 degrees using a calculator, a PT chart, or the gauge face. In this case, we're using the gauge face. So we see 102 degrees as our saturated temp. And then we have a line temperature on the liquid line of 89 degrees. So to find the subcoin, we take the sat temp minus a line temp. So 102 degrees minus 89 degrees, and we're left with an actual subcoin of 13 degrees. Now you need to make sure to let this system run for five to 10 minutes before checking the refrigerant charge level. And once we determine what that subcoin is, in this case, it's 13 degrees, we need to compare that to the target subcoin listed on the rating plate of the unit. If there is no target subcoin there, a good target number is about 11 degrees on a single speed unit. And in this case, the rating plate says a target subcoin of 11 degrees. Now, just keep in mind that some units may have multiple target subcoins depending on the outdoor temperature. But in this case, our target subcoin is 11 degrees. And as long as we're within plus or minus three degrees from 11, which means that if we have 14 degrees or whether we have eight degrees of actual running subcoin, we're going to be accurately charged. And in this case, we have 13 degrees of actual subcooling, so we know that we're accurately charged. So the long and short of this is if you have too low of a subcoin, you're undercharged. And if you have too high of a subcoin, you're overcharged. In scenario two, we have a pressure on the red gauge of 336 PSI, and we have a liquid line temperature of 83 degrees. If you're going to solve this on your own, go ahead and pause the video now. Okay, so on the red gauge, we have 336 PSI. We convert that to an R410A saturated temperature of 104 degrees, and we have a liquid line temperature of 83 degrees. So we take 104 degrees minus 83, and we're left with an actual subcoin of 21 degrees. So 21 degrees is 10 degrees higher than our target, so that means that we're overcharged. In this scenario, we would need to recover some refrigerant out of the high pressure side of the system, which is the small liquid line, a little at a time. As we do this, our subcoin is going to lower and it's going to be closer to our target subcoin. In scenario three, we have a pressure on the red gauge of 283 PSI and we have a liquid line temperature of 82 degrees. If you're going to solve this on your own, go ahead and pause the video now. Okay, on the red gauge, we have a pressure of 283 PSI. We convert that to a saturated temperature of 92 degrees, and we have a liquid line temperature of 82 degrees. So we take 92 minus 82, and we're left with a actual subcoin of 10 degrees. 10 degrees of actual subcoin is only one degree away from our target subcoin, so we know that we're accurately charged. In scenario four, on the red gauge, we have 291 PSI, and we have a liquid line temperature of 88 degrees. If you're gonna solve this on your own, go ahead and pause the video now. Okay, so we have 291 PSI on the red gauge and we convert that to an R4 tonight saturated temperature of 94 degrees and we take a liquid line temperature of 88 degrees. So we take 94 minus 88 and we're left with an actual subcooling of six degrees. So we know that that's undercharged because we're five degrees lower than our target subcoin. In this case, we would need to search for refrigerant leaks. And if we were gonna add refrigerant into that system, we would do that in the large vapor line service port. And we would add refrigerant a little at a time in order to get our subcoin to increase to get closer to our target. In scenario five, we have a pressure on the red gauge of 267 PSI. We have a liquid line temperature of 86 degrees. If you're gonna solve this on your own, go ahead and pause the video now.
Okay, so on the red gauge we have a pressure of 267 PSI. We convert that to an R4 tonight saturated temperature of 88 degrees. So we take 88 minus the liquid line temperature of 86 degrees and we're left with an actual subcooling of 2 degrees. In this case we're severely undercharged, we're 9 degrees lower than our target and we barely have any subcooling at all. In this case we would need to really search for the refrigerant leaks in order to fix this unit. In scenario 6 we have a pressure on the red gauge of 378 psi. We have a liquid line temperature of 99 degrees. If you're going to solve this on your own go ahead and pause the video now. Okay, on the red gauge we have a pressure of 378 psi. We convert that to an R4 tonight saturated temperature of 112 degrees. We take 112 minus the liquid line temperature of 99 degrees and we're left with an actual subcooling of 13 degrees. Since our target is 11 degrees of subcooling, we're only 2 degrees higher than the target, so we are correctly charged. As long as we remain about 3 degrees plus or minus what our target is, we know that our charge level is correct. In scenario 7 on the red gauge we read a pressure of 385 psi. We have a liquid line temperature of 90 degrees. If you're going to solve this on your own go ahead and pause the video now. Okay on the red gauge we have a pressure of 385 psi. We convert that to a saturated temperature of 113 degrees and we take 113 minus 90 degrees and we're left with an actual subcooling of 23 degrees. Our actual subcooling is 12 degrees higher than our target subcooling of 11. So we know that this system is overcharged. In this case, in order to remove some refrigerant from the system, we would need to recover a little refrigerant at a time out of the small liquid line, which is the high pressure side while the unit's running. We don't want to remove too much refrigerant because we would be accidentally removing some refrigerant oil from the system while we're recovering. But as we recover, the subcooling is going to lower and it's going to get closer to what our target is. Now remember that if a system is correctly charged or slightly overcharged, the thermostatic expansion valve should be able to hold the superheat across the indoor coil accurately at about maybe say 10 to 14 degrees. It might range from 8 to 16 degrees. But anytime you're checking the charge with the subcooling method with a high side gauge, you're also going to need to check the total superheat on the blue gauge and with the temperature on the vapor line just to make sure that the TXV is doing its job properly. So to check our total superheat at the outdoor unit, we're going to look at our blue gauge and in this case we have 114 psi. We convert that to an R4 tonight saturated temperature of 38 degrees and we have a vapor line temperature of 52 degrees. So in the case of total superheat, we take our line temperature minus our sat temp so we take 52 degrees minus 38 and we're left with a total superheat of 14 degrees. In this case, the thermostatic expansion valve is doing its job properly. So if you want to learn more about troubleshooting air conditioning systems, make sure you check out our refrigerant charting and service procedures for air conditioning book. We go over checking the charge, preparing the system for refrigerant, troubleshooting, making sure we have proper airflow size to the unit. And we go over a lot of different scenarios and step-by-step -step procedures. Make sure you check out the full outline over at acservicetech.com slash acbook. We also have a thousand question workbook along with an answer key to test your knowledge and we have quick reference cards that you can use out in the field. All of these resources are available over at acservicetech.com slash store and also on Amazon. We have our ebook available over on iTunes, Google Play, and our website. And make sure you check out all the free resources we have at our site, such as the podcast calculators, the articles, the quizzes. And hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.